Welcome to the next Wasabi Wallet Research Club. Uh, we've had some nice presentation about different phases of coin joins. Go into it. Yeah, so I'm just uh, using this whiteboard here. Uh, that's you know pretty useful for visualizing because I, I feel like sometimes when you think about these things, it can be hard to to visualize. And uh, and here in front of me, I just have an example of what uh, 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 how I visualize a coin join. You have a few users on the left hand side, and and they're queuing up some coins. And this arrow represents the coin join. And on the right, they have a bunch of coins that belong to different users. Um, and uh, the, really the question that I was trying to get at is, can we have um, the Wabi Sabi coin join process be more reliable and quantifiable in terms of the expected results? So how long it's going to take, how many UTXOs is going to have, that type of stuff. That This is sort of what... Um, what I was meaning to look at. And so what I did was I just, I went on this whiteboard and I just sort of drew, drew some, some diagrams, um, uh, thinking out loud, so to speak. And, 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 and here's what I, what I've got so far. Uh, I, I thought about this problem and I thought it would make sense to break down the coin joining into phases, um, just so, so we can visualize because really the wallet is doing, at least for us, like as humans, we, we should think of it as three different distinct things. Um, the first is taking some coins. Um, in most cases, I think it's going to be a small number of coins, right? Because it, it's very plausible that a user will take some money, withdraw it from an exchange, will want to mix it, for example, and then spend it. Um, they might only have one coin or two coins or three coins. So we're taking some coins and we're expanding them, we're mixing them, but purposefully fanning them out quickly so as to make many, many, many coins for efficient remixing. And so I've done some, some, some again, napkin calculations here. This is not uh, something super fancy. And I said, well, what if, you know, what if we have just one coin, right? Um, and if we have one coin in the first coin join, we'll create eight distinct coins from the one. And so on the bottom here, I've, I've, I've written out how many coins the user owns by doing this. In the second coin join, uh, he or she will select one of those previous coins from the eight and remix them again, creating eight coins from that one coin. So now they have 15 UTXOs, seven from the first mix, eight from the second mix. And then again, coin join three, uh, I, I just arbitrarily said, let's just keep taking from the first mix. So, you know, it doesn't, nothing here has to be set in stone, um, but this is what it's doing. Coin join three now has 22 UTXOs and then 29. You'll notice that the number here is plus seven. Every time you, you mix, you consume one, you produce eight. Cool property of this little idea here is that if you had not one but two coins, then you can, for example, register two coins in the beginning and in the first coin join, again, you will have consumed two U2XOs, but then still produced eight and everything else will remain the same. Same thing as if you had three coins. In fact, if you had 10 coins, it's arguable that you could take the out of those 10 coins, maybe take five, mix them. And then in the second coin join, select one from the eight UTXOs that were mixed and the remaining five that you haven't mixed before or any combination therein where you end up after four coin joins with exactly 29 uh, UTXOs. Hey, a yep. question here, uh, what are the different colors in the circles? Yeah, uh, in this case, I was just, uh, it, it's hard because a coin join output is also an input, right? For the next uh -huh. coin join. So in this case, I just said like, here's the user and the, this is the red coin is the selecting coin to be spent in the coin join, to be consumed in the coin join. And then okay. the orange is that what they received. But then again, one of the orange here is also the one they're going to use in the future for coin join two to register. And I, I, I know it's confusing because we're looking at like transactions kind of melded together, but you know, I, I I think I think this is still easy enough to kind of visualize what's what's going on here. The user is is, is just registering these red coin and then getting uh, a bunch of orange, and then again registering a red coin, getting a bunch of orange. It's it's sort of a fanning out, right? That's, that's what's happening. It's a fanning out. Okay, so now what's the result of this? The result is that the um so so yeah so a few rules, right? All unmixed coins get selected. Um, the, the idea here is we don't want any unmixed coins. We want coins that are mixed. Um, we always create eight outputs when we um, uh, make uh, our, our selection. And we always have one mixed output selected. And we stop when we hit more than, let's say, 28 UTXOs. This number is up for debate. We can discuss this. But again, with this current model, like if you, you know, adding always seven, selecting one, adding 
adding eight always plus seven, you get 29 UTXOs. That's, that's just how it works. Mm -hmm. um, just, just a quick, uh, uh obvious uh, addition is that in what you had there a bit further down in the expansion phase, there should still be some randomness, right? So sometimes you create six outputs, sometimes you pick two mixed outputs, you know? Absolutely. So like th there's nothing about this. So, uh, sorry, what was the example you just gave me? Uh, for example, instead of just picking one mixed output together with the fresh ones, we pick two or three, right? or we don't always create eight. Sometimes we create six or five or whatnot. So this is where I would argue it's it's not clear if that to what extent does that make things better. For example, you can have randomness where you say, okay, you know, I select a coin, I create eight outputs, you know, and then uh, the let next me, one. Or, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, let me give a concrete example, right? So um, if the behavior would always be pick one fresh input and and create eight mixed outputs then an attacker knows that a single fresh, like that a fresh input on the input side uh, is the total input sum of that user, right? There's no ambiguity that there might be a mixed one or a second. Oh, one sec, one, right? one sec. Uh, no, no, that, uh, that's exactly where there's still randomness. That's a great point, but this is where there's still randomness. If the user has two fresh coins, then they could have been together yes. in that first coin mm -hmm. join. But also suppose the user is in the expansion phase and then they get a brand new fresh coin into their wallet. It will be mixed with already mm -hmm. partially mixed coins in the expansion phase. Yes, yes. But same, uh, same on the output side, right? If we always create outputs, then assuming the attacker knows the input sum, right? If, for, for example, only just one coin, right? Then yep. you know that the actual subset is only that which can be created out of eight denominations on the output side. And so if you find a possible subset with only six outputs, the attacker knows that that's invalid. That, and that's, and that's mm -hmm. entirely true, yeah. Yeah, like overall, yes. if, you know, if you know that, let's say I'm paying you, Aviv, uh, if I see you putting that coin into a coin join, I already know that it's like, it's a fresh coin. And I can already conclude that at least like eight of these outputs are going to be yours. Maybe they end up being that amount that I send you. Maybe you have multiple other inputs, but if not, yeah. Yeah, absolutely right. So yeah. it's, it's not, um, you know, you can't say a few things, not j just, just to be clear, right. Um, again, like if someone knows that your inputs and then, you know, looks at the output size, right? We are giving people anon score based on equal outputs, right? Right now, that's currently the setup. Equal outputs don't care if you know the input uh, amount, right? So, like, it's it's it, you're you're not saying that you've you've you you've not taken down the privacy lower than what we've suggested, and even what I've suggested, which is having the probability multiplier, even that would again not be broken by knowing the fact that knowing the number of inputs that a person has. In fact, Wasabi 1.0 is all about knowing the inputs. The reason why I would go against the idea of not doing this way. So for example, like let's say, you know, Max, we add some randomness and we say, okay, we're going to take this coin and we're going to create six outputs, not eight. And then the next time we create eight outputs, we're actually going to select three coins, not one. What's going to happen is that this phase one goes from four coin joins, which is four hours, right? In the best case scenario, it's going to go to eight hours, eight coin joins. But what's more important is that, you know, this is just the first phase, right? So uh, the, the, the real purpose of this is to quickly get into the phase two, which is the efficient mixing. So if I can essentially get a user to efficient mixing quicker, then they'll be able to do efficient mixing longer. And that's much more protection. Um, than trying to make these uh, mixes perfect. These are obviously the least anonymous part of your mixing is when the person still knows the money because it, you still have fresh coins, right? But I, 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 I appreciate the argument for sure. I, I appreciate that this is might, might be contentious, and, and, but there is still randomness for sure. Anyone else with a comment question? Yep, continue. Okay, so the idea is to get to efficient mixing. Now, what is efficient mixing? Well, we built this Wabi Sabi, you know, because it's, you know, it, it's really a powerful tool. You know, it allows you to, to register multiple inputs without letting anyone really know that you've done so. Efficient mixing is using many inputs and using many outputs. If you only have, you know, three inputs 
or you only have three outputs, there's not a lot of ways to make a particular subset sum fit. Um, really where you get the high numbers of subset sum solutions is when you go higher than eight. Eight, nine, ten, but but below six, it's it's actually quite rare that you solve this problem with many variations. So by doing eight inputs and eight outputs on both sides, you are essentially maximizing the purpose of Wabi Sabi. You are getting the absolute most from the software. Now, in this particular case, there can actually be more variability. Not 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 a problem at all. I think uh, as long as the variability does not diverge strongly from the roughly 30 UTXO limit, um, you can absolutely pick six UTXOs, create eight, and then later pick nine UTXOs and create eight again, or create seven. To me, that's I think that's totally fine. The idea here is we're essentially, like in this case, I took a simple version where you're taking eight UTXOs and you're creating eight UTXOs and you're just remixing it. And, and the, 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 the result, the end of this, this, uh, this thing is that you end up with 29 UTXOs um, of which all UTXOs have now been mixed a total of three times. Any one UTXO has, and there's a little bit of like a tiny little asterisk where sometimes it's, it's, you know, a little bit more than three, sometimes a little bit less. Um, but, but, uh, on average, like with almost no real exceptions, every coin has participated in three distinct coin joins. Again, because they're melding with other coins, it's harder to like to say that exactly, but that's sort of what I've sort of drawn out here. So this sort of phase two, you take eight coins and you produce eight coins. And again, with four coin joins, you go from uh, on average, uh, most coins being mixed twice now to on average, most coins being mixed three times. And here again, these coin joins are much, much stronger in terms of privacy, because again, there's so many inputs, so many outputs. And from here, you, you might say, well, how can we start to like make more probability, more kind of uh, general um, expectations? You could expect, for example, that a coin coming out of a coin join in Wasabi 2.0 will have an anon score on average of five. You know, five seems pretty reasonable. Five means there's probably like, you know, 10, 10 people on the input side, 10 distinct users. I think five is pretty reasonable. Some coins will have more, some coins will have less. In which case, in this case, you could say, for example, these 29 UTXOs have roughly, you know, 15 Anon score. And then you can say something about the uh, Anon score uh, after a number of coin joins have happened. And then sort of the last phase, which I was uh, just sort of drawing out... Uh, uh, I was I have yet uh, haven't drawn out just yet um, would be the third phase, just the consolidation phase. And in this case, we're just trying to um, take these coins and uh, quickly consolidate them to a reasonable number, which I would say is about 15 um, coins. I think that's pretty reasonable or 16, in which case we would select 10 produce, uh, let's say, you know, six, I think is, is reasonable. So that's a, a minus four. So in order to get that, you would need, I believe, uh, is one, two, three, so four, roughly four transactions to do that. So the consolidation phase can be done in four coin joins. Uh huh. Yeah, that's uh, that's very interesting. And I guess the the biggest difference here to what we have currently on master is that we don't just consider the input count that we register, but also the output count. So the number of outputs that we register. Um, and I just want to highlight that this decreases the ambiguity of the subsets, right? So assuming the attacker knows that I am selecting eight outputs because I am in the efficient mixing stage, yep. uh, for example, right? Then the number of possible subsets that I could be in are only those with eight. And right? so here again, there should be at least some randomness. Uh, and I'm thinking to do it similar of how we're currently doing it on the input side. Right, so we, we have an input count target, let's say that's five, but then there's still some randomness that maybe it's three, maybe it's four, maybe it's five, six, or seven, right? But the with the highest probabilities that it's five, right? But it's it's still ambiguous. Yeah, and I think that's all right. I think the 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 point of this exercise is to say, can we give people rough ideas of, of expectations? So if, if it, you know, again, the, the question is like, if someone has a, a single unmixed coin and they ask us, what is the roughly the expected time it will take? I could tell you now that if uh, a mix produces an Adam score of roughly five, then going from phase one, two, and three will always take 12 coin joins and each coin join gives five. So you have, or not, yeah, each, each coin join gives five to the participating coins. So you'd have like, I believe it would be 25 Adam score for 12 coin joins to, to mix. 
And then, and then the variability is just like depending on the number of the amount of liquidity at the time. But that would be like roughly. And then if 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 it was low liquidity, I would say, well, the efficient mixing would have to go a, a second round, which is four more coin joins, to get to uh, a mix, an additional mix for all the coins. Um, do you think that like having these different behaviors across the wallet lifecycle, that that is an additional fingerprint that the attacker could use? You know, if he can figure out that you are in the efficient mixing, that decreases your anonymity set substantially. Yeah, but like you have to like, so the problem there is that you have to give, um, so let's say I, yeah, so if the person knows you're in the efficient mixing, they have to find which of the eight inputs belongs to you. Eight inputs that come from previous coin joins where there is an anon score of, you know, whatever it is, five. So there are equal outputs. And then the person has to figure out which coins you got on the right hand side that match that exact amount with eight outputs of which there are hundreds of variations there. So again, at best you have a probability. And then this happens four more times. To me, I think it, you, you get to a point where we should be more concerned about users than about perfect privacy. Because the, the, there are some things we could do that makes, you know, like I, I think, for example, that that's, I think, what is enticing Adam with these big UTXO numbers is that it's actually better for privacy, but all it takes is that all the users have to change and like adapt to that. And, mm -hmm. the, and then the fact that they don't is why it's going to be bad privacy. One, and there's still, uh, you know, the question if, if it's even bad, like if, if, if this is actually worse, because maybe it's even not, because think of it right now, like right now, there's only one phase, so to say, right? The client behaves the same across the entire life cycle, other than the input selection, right? But I'm, I'm talking about output selection. Now. And if we then change that to have kind of three different behaviors, then there is arguably even a bit more ambiguity, precisely because the, the attacker does not exactly know which input is in which phase right now. Exactly, but also appreciate that with this model, you're you're almost always creating many outputs. So in the expansion and the phase two, you're creating many outputs. You rarely uh, go for a small number of outputs. Telling the attacker that there's going to be many outputs is a shitty thing to hear. Even if you say before it could have been many, could have been few. Now you know it's many. I think that doesn't make it better. I think it, if if anything, it makes it worse because it also means other people for sure have many outputs. And again, if every mm -hmm. person on the input side has a thousand ways they could have created the outputs, you have a really big problem for any attacker. Well, one thing that I really like, just let's assume that everyone is actually like, you know, creating at least in the expansion phase and efficient mixing phase. They are always creating eight outputs, and yeah, uh, an efficient mixing phase, for example, you're yeah, choosing always eight outputs and everything. Like the point is that how many users do we expect that we can actually have in a in a round? Then, like let's say, if our maximum would be like hundred inputs or two hundred inputs, that means that we're only gonna have like twelve to what twenty five uh, users, and all of them will have eight inputs and eight outputs at least in these the certain phases so like it just limits a lot of the ambiguity and the different possibilities in my opinion um, well again it's okay to have sometimes seven you know and i would argue if possible in the future sometimes nine i i i don't think eight should be the hard limit but yeah it's 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 not a problem to have a little bit of ambiguity but i mean again even if i told you that yes everyone has eight, exactly eight outputs and you have you know 12 users and you're staring at 100 outputs how does that help you no it doesn't necessarily like help me uh, in that case like if i know one of your eight inputs that might not help me too much but it helps me a lot like if i know that that's already like a coin that i sent to you so it's a fresh coin so it's a, i know that this coin and you're probably going to have x amount of other coins that are going to be in this like first phase now the expansion phase that's already giving mm. like i don't think so because you don't know abif's coin count before you make the payment he might he might be like in the very late stage and already in the consolidation mode and then you send him an additional coin yeah and but the consolidation is you cannot put your like non-private coins and private coins together so like every time no, you this can, point right? that well can you abif I think that you this. can in phase one and two. I, I think in the consolidation phase. Yeah, it should be just private. It should be just private and and mostly private. 
Yeah, I mean, like, that's a point. Uh, so every time a new coin goes to a coin join, I know that that's the expansion phase. And, well, yeah, I just think that it's like, I'm afraid that it gives a, bu- a bunch of information for outsiders. Like, you know, how many participants do we have in total? How many? Uh, yeah. R- 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 Rafi, yeah. the truth is, is that it is quite trivial to give a good estimate as to how many participants are in our coin joins. Because yeah. you simply start to, you can run your own Wasabi wallets, you know, like from your own Wasabi wallets, from your own experience, what how you typically, you know, the average number of inputs and average number of outputs you've produced. You, you, can, you can like, you can pretty reasonably say, okay, this coin join has 50 inputs and 60 outputs. Okay, I, I can say with, with a, a, a good deal of confidence, it's about 12 users, plus or minus three users, right? That's actually totally fine. That's not a problem. That's not a big of a deal, mm-hmm. um, as I, th- I, I well, think you might, you it, might, might think. It, it is a privacy mm-hmm. decrease, but arguably it's it's very small, you know, considering especially the whole privacy that we offer. Yeah, I do agree. Like, it's not necessarily a big problem in a sense, but like, it's a, it sounds like a decrease or like, uh, overall, like, let's say, if you can say that getting these coins private takes you, let's say, for example, 10 coin join rounds. Isn't that kind of like easy if you know when the coin goes for the first time into a coin join, you can expect that, okay, like any coin join rounds that have some coins, you know, like that where there's like 10 coin join hops in between these two, like, I don't know, like you can just draw a lot of these like assumptions that I... Totally. Yeah, I'm afraid that these will give out a lot of information. One thing you'll notice is that, you know, every person will do coin joins at their own pace. You know, some will do 12 in 12 hours. Some will take two days or three days, you know, and, and you're right. Like, like at the end of the day, there are, we, 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 any smart individual will be able to say something broadly about the Wasabi user. Like, oh, they typically put this, you know, put money in, you know, and they wait for this much and then they, they leave. Like there are going to be some average uh, case, uh, average behaviors um, across. The reason why I think this makes sense to make this more predictable is for users, right? It's, it's for users, it's for businesses, it's for people who are deciding like, do I have enough time to mix my money right now before I send it to this person? Like this is going to hopefully answer that question. And, and, to, you know, to be clear, one, one thing that should be concerning to anyone watching this is that if you have 0.1 Bitcoin and you go through this process and it takes you three whole phases of four coin joins each, that's 12 coin joins in Wasabi 1.0, it would have taken you one coin join. And let's just be charitable and say two or three, if you want to remix to get a, a certain anon score. Now, I definitely think this is more private if you if you do 12 coin joins in this in this mechanism, but we should be clear that time-wise it is taking longer. And having more randomness and uncertainty, it, it will only make it slower. Like this is this expansion phase is the fastest possible way to get to the right number of coins. And then this efficient mixing is the fastest possible way to, to mix your coins. Okay, uh, then another question. Uh, don't you think it matters like what are the size of the like the the values of the UTXOs? Or in it, other words, what should trigger the or no, sorry, I, I have a different point. Roughest point first. Yeah, so yes. just uh, just thinking like if you have like let's say five uh, hundred thousand Satoshis or if you have like hundred bitcoins, should the wallet behave in the same way more or less? No, I think that there should be a cutoff point that could even be in the coordinator. Like the coordinator can just declare the current safe upper limit for a UTXO, which could be, for example, today it's like 0.5 BTC, let's say. And so if you find out that that's the current safest upper limit for mixing your BTC, then my guess is that the expansion size would go from 29 UTXOs to whatever number, like multiplier of that. So if you have five Bitcoin, it would be more than 29 UTXOs, it could be a lot more. It could um, be, uh, it, it could default to, to maybe, maybe, yeah. Like, like this could be, this could be like a multiplier effect. So yeah, it, it would be, if, if, if you have 10 times the minimum, then yeah, I mean, I hate to say it, but it could be 10 times that. Another question, what triggers the different phases? Is it coin count? Is it Anon score? Is it a mix of both? Yeah, it's coin count and the fact that all the coins are at least mixed once. Mm-hmm. The add-on score uh, is going to be 
modest because you have on average two mixes per coin once you finish the expansion phase. So, I mean, if, if, if people set their anon score to five, it might be done by then. Like you might not need, yeah. but here, here's another thing, right? If, if, if the expansion phase doesn't need to, like if there's no, so efficient mixing phase is, is when you have coins, you have the right number, the optimal number, which is again, something like 30 coins. Uh, they need to be mixed further. That's what triggers the efficient mixing um, is that the, the, the anon score is too low. Um, so it but, could be that. Uh, okay. Yeah. Even, but even if you have a low anon score target, you don't only want to expand, right? You, you also want to consolidate, right? Even if it's, yeah, even if you have low anon score. Even if you have low anon score, you don't want to always expand. You want to consolidate. Yes, so you'd go from phase one to phase three. Uh -huh. ah. yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh -huh. And Rafi, one thing that you should note is that currently a lot of the coin joins that I observe, at least on testnet, consume you know a couple of coins and then create you know five outputs. If if there's a lot of users behaving like that, it means the subset sum problem is pretty trivial to find. The subset sum problem, when you have um, not that many users and 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 just you know five inputs or five outputs, becomes easier to solve. I think it is it is to everyone's benefit to have users have a higher number of of um... yeah. The, and Avif, that's actually what I was saying earlier. Like maybe adding these phases is a privacy benefit, right? Because right now there is an average user, right, and that that's pretty close to every user. But if we have these different phases. Uh, then the average is all of a sudden very different uh, from from the edges, right? Because the average is still going to be five outputs, but many create one, many create eight, right? Right. Yeah, I think this can be done without serious privacy drawbacks. Consolidation phase is a minus four cross four sixteen. Yeah, exactly. So that's exactly it. So so the third phase is four coin joins of consolidation. And uh, takes it subtracts your your coins by sixteen. So then the real question is, how does this behave in different circumstances? And that's I think um, the real question is like, how does it behave in different circumstances? So what happens if a user has a couple of coins? They click the mix button. You know, it mixes a few coins, and maybe it finishes the expansion phase. And now you have these br brand new coins show up in the wallet. What happens there? Because now you have 29 UTXOs plus you have these like unmixed coins. And that's an interesting question. Like, for example, do you um, do you efficiently mix with those unmixed coins? Um, um, yeah, I, I would say so. Um, you're just going to have the quote unquote consolidation penalty as, uh, you know, the, the, the weighted average. So, but the, the phase shouldn't change. You're gonna get less anon score in that round if you choose a fresh coin and not a mixed coin, right? Yep. But that doesn't matter. Excellent. So the idea is that the expansion phase is only needed for wallets that have small small UTXO set because once you do the expansion phase and then you start to get new UTXOs, then you're just per you're perpetually in the efficient mixing stage. You you already have enough inputs. You already um, you might even be in the consolidation phase. Right, okay. except in 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 that case, um, uh, I, I I guess you 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 would be, but uh, I I wouldn't think so because the consolidation phase is 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 about taking well mixed coins and trying to to consolidate them to a very small number of coins on the output side. Like yeah, but six you can fewer. you can take many coins, like seven mixed ones, one unmixed one. You know, you take the the uh, average uh, anon score, and then you just create one or two outputs. Why not? I was thinking it might make sense to have the consolidation phase only privy to private coins. It's a very good question. Um, maybe coins that are at least mixed once, you know, something like that, like uh, an unscore larger two. But maybe that's not even necessary, you know, because if we do that, we have worse performance in, in terms of block space, right? If we if we do that, we have worse performance in terms of block space. Do, do what again? Uh, if, if we... Uh, uh, if we do not include fresh coins in the consolidation phase, right, we have to do either more efficient mixing or more fan out. Yeah, and... yeah. So, so, so you have twenty nine UTXOs. Then you start to get a bunch of payments, and those payments put you in the high UTXO count. You know, I think with the efficient mixing, there's no, there's no reason why this efficient mixing can't take. You know, do some consolidation, like maybe phase two and phase three. Maybe they can be like almost 
like similar, like just different gradients yeah, of each other. I'm, because I'm thinking it's uh, we end phase two depending on the anon score target. Yes. Uh, so so if the anon score target is fifty, the idea is that once you have enough coins, like let's say you know eighty percent of your coins above that, like once your average score is like either entirely above that or just a, about there, then you can start consolidating because when you're consolidating, you're also mixing that. That's why I think, you know, it's worth noting. You don't have to wait until after that score, or maybe that score can be about when you consolidate. Maybe that's, maybe the consolidation is just the cherry on top for privacy. The interesting thing as well is suppose you, you finish the phase three and I'll just, I'll, I'll do this later. We'll get this right later, but um, so then you have your, your your third phase and and the idea with the third phase is to get your your coins down to like 15 spendable private coins. If you do these, if you do the consolidation um, and you have 15 private coins, what happens when you get brand new fresh coins, right? You get brand new fresh coins, it expands. The expansion then goes to efficient mixing. Efficient mixing then goes to consolidating. But here's the thing, right? When you're consolidating those new coins, you should now consolidate on top of those original 15 coins that you have in your private wallet already that have already hit the privacy score, if that makes sense. Um, this is also really good for privacy because if, if a person is like uh, hodling a lot of coins, then um, as they get new coins into their wallet, it remixes with their other old coins and it causes their wallet to be... to, to to not have coins that are just like really, really old and private. So like it continuously brings old coins into the front, which I think is a good thing privacy wise, because you don't want to spend coins that you mixed uh, once, you know, a year ago. And then you like spend a bunch of them a year later because you're pointing to like the same period of time a year ago. I'm not sure if I'm saying anything people can understand, but yeah, yeah, it's clear. I mean, you should always coin join before spending. Yeah, and that's what the consolidation of new coins does is that once those new coins are private, they they get they consolidate with your original 15 coins. Mm -hmm. Some of those are selected as well. So, that's that's a good thing. The problem here is that programming this, you know, depends on how the code base is right now. I know the code base is it's a little bit all over the place. I'm not sure if it's that different, actually. We do have different phases, right? We have the min input count target and the max input count, uh, sorry, max UTXO count target. And that changes how many inputs you register, right? So we have this min and max coin count target, which is the trigger in between the phases. And that's specifically like, but there are only, only kind of two phases, right? There's uh, there's uh, expand and then there's consolidate on the input side. Uh, right. And I'm, I'm guessing the addition here would be to take the same coin count target uh, and then apply it to filtering out the output groups that you can select. Yeah, but I'm, I'm thinking, and, and, and that's, you know, me putting on my developer hat, but it should be easy, <laughs> you know, because we, we, we like on, on output selection, we generate the list of all possible output groups, and then we randomly pick one of them, right? One of the better ones. Um, and out of this table, uh, we should simply drop those uh, groups that are uh, not in our output target. And the way that we get our output target for these different phases so I'm guessing in the expansion phase, we want to target eight outputs plus minus randomness. In the efficient mixing, uh, we want to target the same as our input target. So our input target was, let's say it was five, but it's random, right? So let's say we actually ended up choosing six. Uh, then we should take for our output count target also five and do the randomness. So maybe it's four, you know? But it, yes, it has the, in the same base as the randomness. In the efficient uh -huh. mixing, the the you would always pick seven, eight, nine, or ten inputs. You, uh -huh. you want to pick and up also, very, very large. Like, so it, the target yeah. should be eight, and then with randomness. But also, if you just happen to be more than thirty UTXOs, then you can do a small consolidation where you go with ten inputs and eight outputs. For example, you're still efficiently mixing. Mm -hmm. You're just slightly consolidating. Yeah, but I would do that probably like randomly both up and down, right? In the in the expansion, sorry, in the efficient mixing, you should sometimes have same number of inputs outputs, 
sometimes more inputs, sometimes more outputs. Sure. So just by one or two, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you you really want to have like more than six on both inputs mm -hmm. and outputs, like all, all the yes. time. Uh, well, uh, all the time. You know, like that's again, like 100% probability, so to say. Uh, the and thing is, you know, is that even like, if it were 95 or 99% likely that you have more, like more than six on both, uh, I think that's good enough. But if, if it's sometimes in very few cases happens that even though you're in the efficient mixing phase, you only have four inputs, three outputs, um, that kind of, you know, intuitively feels like overall it increases the ambiguity substantially. But yeah, of course, at the cost of less efficient behavior, which is yeah, what we I'm, want to target. I, right? I'm also like, I, it's it's tough for me to say if it does, because with four inputs, three outputs, there's almost no way to regroup your inputs or your outputs. I can I can tell you this, like I've I've stared at the um the simulation, you know, for such a long time that I can tell you that for amounts of less than five inputs, fewer than five outputs, you might as well just call it like one output sum. Yeah, and just to finish um, the, the third phase, um, the consolidation phase, right? We have an input count target of 10, um, you know, plus minus, or just minus in this case. Um, and we have a output count target of two plus minus, right? So the question is, can we ever have an output, uh, output count target of only one? The problem that I see here is that it increases the number of loss, most likely, right? Because your input sum minus fees is going to be different than just one denomination. Uh, however, here's an, another idea. Consider to select inputs that sum up minus fees to exactly one denomination, right? So know which output denomination you want to generate, and based on that, pick some inputs. But that's quite new. That's very hard to do, unfortunately. If you want to get an exact amount, you need to have a ton of inputs to choose from to be able to like pinpoint exact amounts. Yeah, I'm not sure, but we have these low Hemingway amounts, right? So they should sum up nicely. Um, but yeah, yes, but you have, have you have you have like uh, 10, 15, 20 inputs or something. Mm. Yeah, you have like you have like uh, fees and coin join fees. You know, like uh, uh, network fees. Those are things that that. Make it harder. Like yes, they're low hamming weights, of course. Like you have outputs that are literally two inputs could be exactly one output. But the problem is, is that you have fees on top of that, which make it no longer equal. Yeah, the but general here, rule, for is example, you, you know, we could we could have like you know we, we could kind of then see these the smallest value outputs that we get as five thousand sats, and we could see those as kind of the the total fee that we pay. You know, so you put like I don't know a point one, a point two, and a point four or something. Plus then uh, five thousand cents at the end, right? And then you get a what did I say? A point seven on the output side. Yeah, I mean it. It, it, it could work. Yeah, but I agree, it's um, difficult. But so, like, I think maybe you can confirm, but I think we can get this concept by sticking with the UTXO count targets, minimum, maximum. You know, we expansion is until we hit the min UTXO count target. Uh, efficient mixing trig uh, uh, ends with the max output target, a max UTXO set target, then we just need that concept of the output count target. Yeah, I think I think uh, that that's pretty... It sounds like the output count target is probably the biggest change here. Mm -hmm. I would, I would. by the way, I would love to test this out. So the, the, the good news about this is that it's, it's deterministic where you can kind of roughly expect like 12 coin joins. The bad news is that for some users, they're going to be upset that, you know, it's slower than Wasabi 1.0. But the nice thing is that for other users, it'll be much faster than Wasabi 1.0. You know, users who have like two Bitcoin, for example, this should be way faster. In terms of, by the way, the, um, the cutoff, if you think about it, these 29 UTXOs, right, the cutoff should be you have 15 UTXOs on the consolidation side. And if your safest UTXO to mix into is 0.5 BTC, then my guess it should be something like 10 times that. So I think if someone had like, let's say five Bitcoin as a, an amount, I think it would be fine for them to do this entire system without having more than like 29 UTXOs because they would simply consolidate into like 0.5 BTC amounts. It would be a problem for people with 50 Bitcoin though. How often did we have that as a user base? People with that one. Quite often. 
quite often. Quite often. I, I don't know the exact distribution, but certainly a lot. Yeah, so if it was 50 Bitcoin, I would assume everything multiplies tenfold, which means that, unfortunately, everything multiplies tenfold. Yeah, it would it would be 10 times the expansion phase, 10 times the efficient mixing. It'd be 140 mixes. Yeah, but... But that's 50 Bitcoin. Maybe, you know... Yeah, but if we have like multiple beers with that level of money, it shouldn't take 140. Yeah, so probably like a linear multiplication is too much. It should be logarithm or something that it kind of, you know, flattens out. Well, just to be clear, the only reason why that's a problem is because of liquidity, right? I'm just assuming that the smallest amount that the user can get while still getting some level of privacy is like mm-hmm. 0.5 Bitcoin. Uh, if that number was one the way, Bitcoin, then it would be it would be much better. Mm-hmm. But by the way, we have coordinator side max suggested input value, uh, and hopefully users do that. So it will mean that whales mix together, and then whales get a large anon score. So how many how many different coin joins are there then? There's like a whale one, and then there's a regular one, or is there even more in between? I think it's powers of ten. We have something like this. this. So oh. under one Bitcoin, <laughs> over one Bitcoin, over ten. It's, Bitcoin. it's like point one. I think point one, one ten, a hundred, a thousand, something like this. And it's like every second round is a point one, and then every other round is the the one, then a point one again, then a ten, then a point one again, then a hundred, and a point one again, and then a thousand, and a point one again. Oh my God! Where where do these uh, these weird uh, ideas come from for like <laughs> structuring? <laughs> Like who? Uh, okay, one sec. So why not just have a point one all the time and then a ten? Like what? Because what? you want you want the whales to mix with the plebs, right? Because whales will still break down their amounts um, to lower values, right? And that lower output then gives cover traffic for the plebs. So this this is a good thing until we hit block space limits or transaction limits. But yeah, so basically we need to first get like big whales to mate with each other and they will produce baby whales and they can blend in with the smaller. Yeah, if only, if only the whales weren't all guys. That's the problem, right, Rafi? <laughs> 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 so, um, but I, I'm, I'm confused. So, okay, so the idea is that whales are always participating in every coin join, but plebs are only participating no, in plebs. No, no, sorry. Uh, no, this is a max suggested input. Right, the maximum. So this means plebs participate in every round. Whales wait, and and they wait until other whales will join, basically. Why? Let me just understand. Why not just have everyone participate with each other all the time? Well, because then you have a problem that uh, you know in round one a guy shows up with a hundred BTC, but he's yeah. the only one. The next biggest guy has one Bitcoin, right? And then yeah. in round two, the next whale comes with five hundred BTC, right? But mm-hmm. still, the, the second largest guy is one Bitcoin. Uh, so if the first round would have had a max suggested input of one Bitcoin, the, the first whale would have waited and he would have participated in the second round with a thousand Bitcoin max suggested input, where gotcha. then the 100 and the 500 BTC guy are together. Gotcha. Okay. I think it makes that- sense. I kind of don't like it that it's uh, server side. Uh, and notice it's a suggestion. It's not a mandatory enforcement. Um, but I believe that current implementation clients don't break the suggestion. One I'm not sec. exactly sure, though. Is it possible for everyone just to, like, because there's the there's the, the phase where, um, could it not be the case that during input registration, after that's done, that the server tells the big input to not participate? Is that plausible? Um, like, like, maybe they just find uh, out. Uh, I guess. I mean, you know, a nice solution would be that uh, during input registration, you know which inputs are already registered. And that is another idea to do that. Um, but we haven't done that. So you only learn of the inputs at output registration. Uh, so, but if the uh, server allows a the registration and then just removes the largest ones, that might actually be better, a bit more dynamic. Mm, it's a good point. Sounds difficult. Yeah, so again, like the the mixing with like uh, a lonely whale is somewhat solved. It's it's not yet beautifully solved, but it's good enough, I would say. Yeah, I'm, I really I'm okay like with that. Analogy. 
What's the analogy? I mean, like whales and <laughs> yeah, like we're, oh, yeah. we're taking care of that. The big whales are not lonely; that they can find each other. <laughs> yeah, actually, we're you know, um, quencher and coordination is a dating service. Uh, so exactly, yes. exactly. <laughs> it's a modern day Tinder. Oh, this is all being recorded. Oh fuck, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't no, think that's allowed to have so much fun during research. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Well, um, um, just to be clear, by the way, I'm not sure there is a faster way to do the three phases than twelve coin joints. Like, I'm curious if there was a faster way. M m maybe you could uh, do the first phase, the expansion phase, but you don't expand to 29. Instead, you expand to just 15 UTXOs. That only takes two coin joins. And from those 15 UTXOs, you just keep remixing from there, right? The problem is that it's, it's. Um, I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe this isn't the problem. Like, I, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to be completely honest. I don't know to what extent... Um, this is a problem to just have just two, just 15 UTXOs. You know, and I think it really eight. depends on user preferences. Uh, and those are uh, speed, cost, privacy, right? So if speed is your highest option, uh, you will probably do like, you know, three expansion and then already consolidation. If cost is your, is, is your preference, then probably you're going to do the same. You know, so no efficient mixing and maybe shorter expansion consolidation phases. But if privacy is your biggest and don't care about speed or cost, then yeah, it can be longer. Yeah, because you you again you could cap it at fifteen UTXOs uh, in the mixing. The reason why I think that's not particularly smart is because when you have twenty nine and you remix, you can pick from different coin joints, and if all users behave that way then you get a nice randomness of which coin joins, right? Um, that's okay. why it's not smart to just stop after the first coin join, because in theory, you could stop after first coin join and then go straight from, you know, uh, into remixing, right? And then just pick eight and then and then remix into eight. What um, do you do then if you make a payment and you get a change output? Does it go through that whole system again, 12 coin joins? Yeah, that's a great question. It's the same as receiving a new coin, right? Yeah, like that's the thing, but it sounds it sounds kind of cumbersome, and especially yeah, yeah, but if you change it to pretty small amount. Like, what yeah, if you do? You'd rather wait or something. That's kind of what I'm saying, right? Like the the anon score should not really matter. Like you can and should consolidate even one anon score coins in the efficient uh, mixing stage, and maybe even in the consolidation. And yeah, I, I agree with that. I think in the efficient mixing stage, you can absolutely mix it in and it'll just the the anon score will just be yeah. spread out across the the other seven I, coins. But I'm thinking like maybe we could do something like this. If there is a, a input with one anon score, right? So fresh Bitcoin received or changed from a single user payment, then do at least one expansion phase round, which I, I, even in that expansion phase round, you, you can... So let's say you have 20 mixed coins, all about five N on score, and then you receive a fresh one. Like you make a single expansion round where you have the one fresh one and let's say two of the mixed ones, for example, randomly, right? And you yep. create as many outputs. But then since then all of your coins are above two N on score, you go in efficient mixing or into consolidation depending on your N on score. Yes. So just to be clear, the expansion phase is only needed when users don't have many coins, right? So if users get uh, new coins why? and and uh, and they already have twenty five coins, there's no you don't you don't have to do the the expansion. Expansion is just because you had one coin and that's not good for efficient mixing, right? You want to have more than that. The expansion is only for when you don't have enough coins. So you're, you're right, Max. The idea is is that when, when you have your wallet and you have already mixed coins and now you have a fresh coin coming in, what if those fresh coins, what if that fresh coin was just mixed with the private coins in an eff efficient mixing round mm -hmm. right away? Okay, so that's, oh, okay. How, so then how about this? Um, the expansion phase ends with a UTXO count target, right? And that means if you have above UTXO count target and you get a fresh coin, you don't expand. Um, exactly, yes. The, the efficient mixing phase ends with an Anon score target, right? So yes. um, that means uh, you only consolidate coins above a certain Anon score target. 
Yes. That might be actually the way to go. Different triggers. Yeah. And the efficient mixing, right? Every, so if you have eight coins, you only need one coin join to, to remix. If you have 16, you only need two co coin joins. Maybe we don't need 29 coins or essentially 32 because 32 is four times eight, right? Maybe we could get away with fewer than that. Uh, like sorry, your 29 coins. is correct uh, because you, you spend coins, right? So you destroy them and, and generate Yeah, exactly. Them. So 29 exactly. is correct. But I'm saying like when you have, let's say if you have 32 UTXOs, that should be the hard limit because 32 UTXOs to, to remix each one a single time is four coin joints because you have to, you know, you, you on average you consume eight, right? Yeah, then with a multiplier for whales, something like that. Mm. <sighs> yeah, I, I don't know. Really interesting, um, Aviv. I've been thinking about this for a while, and you've articulated and uh, summarized it very nicely. And I think we're onto something here. Yeah, the the interesting thing is that what's currently being done is, you know, because I noticed this is like for for just so many coin joints, you just have the expansion phase it just goes and goes and goes. That that was back in the day. I mean, now it's 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 less so since since the latest. Uh, code patch i think this can be fleshed out I, th I don't think we have to do this now but i think we can absolutely flesh this out let me see if i can just Aviv, do you know uh, with your simulations um how so an arbitrary input sum how many output groups of a low output count do there exist so let's say we have to target output count of two how many groups do there exist roughly on average for any input sum? Output count of two, like two UTXOs? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I know all, all the output count. There aren't that many because there's only uh, 43 or 46 denominations under one Bitcoin. So it's just 46 times two. So it's like overwhelmingly small. It's like insanely uncommon. Yeah. Um, that's that's going to be the big problem, right? Because that's like uh, saying like, like how many how many different amounts of money can you make with just two coins? The answer is almost none. Because most money is like 67 cents, 68 cents, 69 cents, 70 cents, 71, 72. Th th those are all never going to be two coins, right? Two coins is very rare. There's like, there's only like 10 different types of bills or whatever. So there's like a hundred variations, but there's like tens of thousands of, of values. Yeah. So the question is how efficient can we get that consolidation? Like how small, how, how little Ten to number six. of outputs? 10 to 6 is probably your best bet. I know for sure with six. eight, you, mm -hmm. you guaranteed that you can get it done. Yeah, uh, and with six, um, you get most of them. Mm -hmm. With six, you get most of them, but because you, you have different inputs you can choose from, you have some ability to pick the ideal input so that you can consolidate down to six. But yes, six yeah. is probably your best bet. But six isn't even that much of a consolidation. Right? It's still from 10 to six. a bunch of coins. Yeah, it's, it's not, but I mean... Again, that's why I don't recommend, you know, blowing up to like 50 UTXOs. So you, you what, uh, one, one thing that we did for uh, input selection or output selection, I think it was input selection. I, by now the code has changed. But what we did was you sort the, so in our example with output selection now, how, how we would do it, you generate all possible output groups, right? And now you sort them by output count ascending. So you start with the group that gives you one output, there might be one or two groups like that. Then you have the two output groups, the three output groups, the four output groups. And then you take a random walk from the top to the bottom, right? So there is a 50% chance you take the first one. If you flip the coin and it's true, you pick the first one, right? If it's false, you continue to the next item and you throw the coin again, right? And if it's false, you pick the next one. If it's false, you pick the next one. And then eventually you hit true, right? So the largest probability is at the top of the list. I think something like this might be suitable here again. Uh, yeah, that that's uh, for consolidation phase. Yeah, you can do you can have some randomness. Um, I'm I'm going to tell you now that you're not going to have a couple of options that are in the two coins. I think I, th I think. Um, but there are going to be some, right? So there's probably not going to be any of one. There's going to be some with two, more with three, more with four, a lot with five, a lot with six, very many with seven and eight. Right? Yes. Um, so when when I was doing the calculations for exact amounts, typically you don't get any options until you hit about eight if you give if you give yourself a range of a thousand satoshis you get a few in the sixes a few in the sevens a lot in the eights yeah but we do accept the loss i'm not sure where we stop i think no, it's no, that, that's okay three times the, the, the lowest loss out of all so we generate all possible output groups and right now we like we take the one like we order the list by uh loss ascending 
uh, and we we fill the table so the, the that output group with the least amount of loss, and then uh, until that output group with one point three times the loss of the very first one, right? And out of that short table list, we pick randomly, right? Not a random walk, a random pick. That's fine. I'm just I'm just telling you that um, like the entire point of the simulations for me was to get a grasp on probabilities and different permutations, ways you could build things. And I was surprised when I found out that like those re those those really only occur when you have larger number of outputs. It's quite rare for smaller number. But yeah, that that that's fine. Yeah, you're saying you want to make the consolidation phase more efficient by consolidating to a smaller number. I'm I'm 100% for it. I just think that it's only going to be reliable down to six UTXOs. That's like that's like what you're going to guarantee. Mm -hmm. Sometimes yeah, maybe you like, get five. If there is, if there is an output group with four coins that still has a small enough loss, uh, then we should prefer that one. Totally. Yeah. 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 I'm not so basically, to it at all. the the algorithm would be generate all possible output groups, um, sort them by loss, shorten the list down to that output group of 1.3 times the smallest, then again, reorder that table based on output count, and then take a random walk, right? So uh, it, first we generate all possible output groups, then we remove all those output groups. Uh, so that first list might have uh, two groups, like two output groups, you know, but that two output group has two times as much loss as the smallest one. So in that second step where we removed high loss uh, output groups, those like that, those very low output count groups would likely going to be removed. Uh, and then out of that shorter list, we try to random walk from the top based on UTXO count. Yeah, that that could work. Yeah. Is it is it plausible this gets in before release? If you make a PR, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I guess we have to see of how bad the current master branch is, right? So I'm, I'm, I, I reset my wallets, by the way, uh, and and starting from one coin, one Anon score, and like I think eighteen wallets or something. Uh, I will see how it behaves, um, and yeah, we see. Okay, makes sense. Gonna... Max, are you running like multiple wallets or multiple clients? Multiple clients. I have eight clients, and they have between two and three wallets, and one of them has six wallets. I think the beauty of cubes and virtual machines. <laughs> do, I wonder do you have... why your laptop reassigned. Yeah. Do you have any like clients that uh, that there are like there is only one a uh, one wallet? Uh, I had, uh, but then I didn't. Uh, I, I added more wallets just to get more wallets. So, no, but that's probably a good why, idea. I should probably do another Why point. not? Yeah, probably you should, because that's how maybe most people would use their their wallet, you know? And I do believe that, I don't know, this unknown score calculation when you are running multiple wallets is kind of either broken or something is wrong, you know? Uh, yeah, I had like... I think... Mm -hmm. No, so like uh, I think it makes sense because so you have a coin join round, you have two wallets in the same client that participate in that coin join round, and now these two wallets get into the same denomination group. Right? You know that they belong to you, both of them, and therefore we don't increase the anon score count like with those same client UTXOs. Same client, different wallet, UTXOs. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Prob that, that's probably right. But my, my point is like more from the UX point of view. I had like three wallets running, and they were all coin joining. Two of them like got one hundred percent private, you know, that uh, le progress level, and the other one no. So okay, I had like uh, you know, I, they were all coin joining, but then three of them participated in the next coin join round. You know, and then then the uh, the the the, the privacy uh, progress in the two wallets that reached one hundred percent already now decreased. You know, so it's uh it's completely uh, in my opinion it's but broken. I don't think that should happen anymore because of the weighted anon score. It happened with master with the recent master on mainnet, not on testnet. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Uh, I I think the so that's a UX problem. Another UX problem is. You have two wallets in a client, and now you switch laptops or switch clients, and uh, 
uh, now you only load one of those two wallets uh, and you make a, a rescan and you calculate your add-on score from scratch, uh, it will be a different result on the two laptops, right? Yeah, uh, exactly. That, yeah, that that's what I'm talking about. As well. mm -hmm. Yeah, it's this is like one of those things where we want to be conservative, right? And uh, that's why we consider same client wallets. You know, it's it's like if you have uh, in the same wallet, so one wallet in one client, um, and you get two coins in the same denomination, uh, we we also don't increase the anon score count, right? Um, yeah, yeah, I get I I get that. And but my point is, it would be it would be good if you have one. like, yeah, it would be good if you have one client that has only one wallet or two, you know, just to mm -hmm. because basically that's how most users would use the two point oh. So, but you know, I also increased my anon score targets uh, to a thousand plus. <laughs> so uh, I'm not really yeah. testing user behavior. I'm just uh, testing uh -huh. transaction graph kind of. Uh, Maybe to switch the topic, or do you guys have something more about the consolidation phases? No, I'm just thinking of like consolidating now my all my coins in different wallets. Fuck, this is annoying. Our sending process like requires many, yeah, <laughs> many windows and many things that you have to be typing. But yeah. That's what I have mm -hmm. been telling. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, yeah. especially now that you have to do multiple payments in a row, like, this is annoying. This should be like so much easier. Like, why can't I just... There, uh, yeah, there should be like a... I, I believe there should be a wallet tile where that has two like two boxes, right? Amount okay. and address. And you paste it there and it just jumps to transaction preview. Ah, no, no, no. It doesn't have label. Ah. I think overall we should just have like, you know, at least uh, from inside a wallet when, when you want to make multiple payments in row from one wallet, we should enable, you know, creating multiple outputs. Like yeah, but pay to many one. is, well, yeah. it's implemented in the RPC server, but was never in the GUI 1.0, right? And, mm -hmm. yeah. But I think that would be really convenient if this wallet is designed to be an actual wallet that people use for private payments. We yeah. should not make them do every payment one by one. Yeah, but just notice that uh, uh, pay to many is quote unquote bad for privacy because the two recipients can uh, like see that there is three outputs in this transaction, right? So you can only do pay too many if you are comfortable to reveal the two payment destinations to the other person. Or if you do an But Marsh, wait, sorry, no. No, but isn't that maybe good for privacy? Because if there is only two outputs, then the recipient knows that that's for sure your UTXO. So maybe that's good for privacy. No, but you see pay too many will usually give you three outputs, right? You have two payment destinations and your change. And then when you have three outputs, that's what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, but, but any of the recipients wouldn't know that which UTXO is yours. Mm, ah, okay, uh, I see. Well, counter argument, if you make two payment outputs with rounded amounts, you get a non-rounded change. Well, that's kind of another issue, but yeah. yeah, but, yeah but my yeah, point yeah. is, if you have more I outputs, mm -hmm. yeah. Moving on, slightly different topic. Old idea, but I think still worth talking uh, about. And that is a thing I call the likelihood to coin join. Right. So before input registration, you throw a coin, and if it hits true, you participate in this current round of coin join. If it hits false, you do not participate in the current round of coin join. Uh, the the weighting or or the probability of that coin should depend on user preferences. So if you are in speed priority you you should uh, have like a probability of 95% to participate in this next coin join. Uh, if you have a privacy priority, you should participate only in, uh, I don't know, like 50% of, of, of the coin joins or something like that. One of the nice benefits is that we will have even fewer same transaction uh, remixes. Because right now in input selection of a single client, we already prefer not to have same transaction remixes. Right, so to remix two coins that you got in the same previous coin join transaction. However, because every user mixes every round 100% of the time as soon as their online and auto coin join is on, that, that means that there is still a rather high number of same output, uh, same transaction remixes, uh, which then we can say with a rather high likelihood they are from different users. 
This is a great example of a good privacy feature, but another feature that just kind of goes against users having a, a good understanding of what's going on and good expectations of how long things are going to take. Well, you could take that uh, the weighting of the of that coin uh, and consider it in the in your time estimate. All right, so let's say the, the privacy preference has a 50% chance. You expect that you need 12 rounds of coin join. Uh, and so you multiply that by, point, uh, by, by two. Uh, and so you know in 24 rounds, you're going to be done. Okay, but users are going to hate that. Like Users are not going to love the idea that their software is flipping a coin of whether or not to like participate. Uh, yeah, users yeah, but are... why not? But that's the user it's... preference. Right. If the, if the user wants speed, be as quick as possible. I still think there should be a non hundred percent probability. Like it should be very small. Or yeah, there already is. Large, right? There already is a non one hundred percent probability. When I when I go on test and I run my thing, I never I rarely am able to just go and 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 uh, participate in twenty four coin joins in a row. It's almost never. I'm always something happens. I have to close my laptop or whatever. Like things change. Yeah, but that's. That's another thing, right? Then, if you uh, like, if if we don't have an active probability like that, then when a coin stops mixing, we can kind of assume the user went offline, right? Because that's the only case where it happens, or it reached the Anon score set of target. But if there is such a probability and coins don't mix, well, it might as well be that the user is still online, but he chose not to mix right now. I mean, I I get I get the idea. I I back it up in terms of that it's good for privacy. I think it's one of those ideas that um, we can have it as a toggle for users, for sure, if, if they want that as a, as, a, as a toggle. And if they don't have a lot of constraints and they want the best, absolute best privacy result. But I'm guessing for the for the middle of the of the line user, users are going to want efficiency and cost. Uh, low uh, time, low cost. I mean, we, we can't assume that. Like, there are users... Uh, who are privacy extremists, right? Who are like, I don't care how long it takes, how much it costs, give me as much privacy as possible. And then there are users who are like, hey, uh, I need to spend this in like an hour, uh, so I need to be done quick. You you also have to appreciate that a big part of the money that's going to come into the company is going to be people like businesses who who see a business case where it's not just like personal funds, but actually like volume of funds in order to like protect business privacy, right? I yes. mean. Um, for example, uh, our company, not that we're doing this now, but well, actually we are doing this now. So like we sell gift cards for Bitcoin, right? And so for us, it's like, we don't really have a time constraint, not, not that much, um, but it would be good to know that stuff wraps up in like a, 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 like a day or two and that it's like f efficient cost wise so that it's not like a huge part of the amount of money. The nice thing with w Wasabi 2.0 is that this would only work in 2.0. This is like literally does not work in 1.0 because gift card amounts are like all over the place. Yeah. But can we drill down more? Like, is this actually a benefit for privacy that sometimes clients skip around? Yeah. Anytime you, you add some uncertainty, for sure, it's a benefit for privacy. The question is, is that does that is that a reasonable attack vector that someone could exploit, that they know that a user is likely to engage in coin joins one after the other it's i would say unclear. yes right. it, it, like it seems to me that if you increase the number of potential coin join transactions that are relevant you increase ambiguity by a lot maybe exponentially i don't know but at least by a lot yeah but i i just i would not you know just knowing from my own personal experience how plausible it is for not being able to participate in in, in enough coin joins i can you know, to like e even say you're you're following someone's coin and it's a large coin, and then you follow it and you think you know kind of which outputs it might be, and then you know what if that user has other coins that he's mixing, and so now he's just selecting a mm -hmm. different set of coins. So now those coins are mixing in like off, you know, they're not mixing sequentially; they're mixing like uh, sporadically. Yes. You can get infinite. There, there's an infinite way to approach privacy. Yeah, so 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 yeah, so right now the, my goal is is to keep the privacy and and to make it more user friendly. And like like more workhorse kind of because mm -hmm. I think the privacy we have is enough. My my concern is that out of the gate we're going to have users complaining. Mhm. Mm 
one, yeah, I mean, one doesn't matter what we do, we're going to have <laughs> people complaining, but yeah. No, no, I, I don't <laughs> care about, there's a very difference. I don't care about people saying random shit on Twitter. I care about actual people complaining, like I'm using the wallet and then this isn't working for me. That's the only complaint that matters. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, a counter argument against my point is that there are already some times where we do not mix. For example, uh, the whale rounds, right? So if, if you're a whale, you're not going to participate. Another example is the, the median uh, transaction fee. But whale right? rounds if, are if, known. One sec, whale rounds are known. Uh, yes, right. But so, so let's assume two things, right? Let's assume you're a whale. You have 100 Bitcoin input. So you're not going to participate in uh, max input below 100. Uh, and additionally, if you set the median transaction fee window to like months, it means you're not going to participate if the current fee rate is larger than the median of the fee rate of the last month, right? And uh, both of that together means that you're not going to, e even if there is a whale round, if the current fee rate is too high, you're not going to participate, right? And now if we would add a third thing, there it might be that we are in a whale round, and even though the current fee rate is low, you might still flip a coin and it says don't coin join. And then you have to wait until the next whale round that is with a low fee. I just so badly don't want to be debugging someone's wallet. And then it's like, oh, by the way, there's a chance in the logs, it'll say that you flipped a coin and that's why you didn't participate. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think we have enough. It's 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 just it's not a bad idea. It's just that it's the the, the question is is it, it's marginal cost, right? Like marginal cost, marginal return. Are are we getting a lot of privacy from this? Is the user going to appreciate that they're getting a lot of privacy? And what is the cost? The cost is that we're going to have users have sporadic behavior and it's going to slow down their process. Even if it's slowing it down 20%. Like uh, right now, it's clear that our software with the design decisions we've made, it seems like most users are going to have to spend overnight like mixing their their wallet to get the, their money. Slowing things down seems like a, like a concern. Yeah, I, I agree that for some users, it's going to be important. But again, then for that user group that prioritizes speed, the probability of not mixing is super small. So then it doesn't really matter. Right? But if if your priority is privacy, then sure, why not take your time? And the cool thing is that improves the privacy of those, even of the guys who want speed, right? because they're not going to remix with your coin of the same previous transaction. I see... Yeah, I see what you're saying. I see the benefit of purposefully mixing at different time periods, right? Which is almost like what you're saying. Yeah, that would be another thing. For example, kind of like fake a different time zone, something like this. Only, even though my computer is running 24-7, like I'm in America, but only mix during Chinese daytime, for example. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So what should we call this feature? Pretend to be Chinese feature? I think that would that would work well with the <laughs> lurking wife mode. <laughs> yeah, Bring back the to Wasabi. <laughs> Welcome to Wasabi. Yeah, I, I I was thinking more that you mix on a Tuesday and then you say, you know what, I'm gonna wait and then I'm gonna mix again on a Thursday. And I'm doing this because I'm mixing with a different group of people now. So rather than mixing, yeah, you know, exactly. hundreds and hundreds of times, wasting tons of money and you know, I'm going to yeah. mix at a later time. Yeah. This is kind yeah. of like your idea of skipping transactions, although this is more, you know, mm. explicitly like this is would be like skipping days, you know, at a time. Yeah. And the thing is, is that users yeah. kind of behave like this a little bit. Like I, I, I can imagine a lot of users, you know, mixing some time and then stopping for some some period and then mixing later. But the, 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 the bigger the bigger question is how at risk are these coins of being detected? You know, that's the really the big risk. How at risk are these? Because the protection of these coins is so much greater than Wasabi 1.0. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, but it's man, yeah, that's so tough, right? We need like it's so difficult to quantify what's the privacy we actually give and what's actually enough, you know. But 2.0 seems like such a massive privacy that it's probably enough, you know. And at this point, we can improve uh, fee and and speed and UX. But, has anyone ah, done? Shit, yeah. Has anyone done a large transaction yet? Have we seen any? What uh, you mean with many inputs, many outputs? Yeah, or? like 200 inputs, 200 outputs. Uh, yeah, I, I would love to for someone to get all the coin join testnet transactions and order them by output count. Uh, nobody has done that so far. Um, I think I have. Okay, cool. Order them by output count. Uh huh. Do you have an up to date list of all the coin join transactions on testnet? Yes, I do. Cool. How did um, you get it? 
I used um, a block explorer, and then I, I uh, essentially filtered for a bunch of things. Cool. So um, you kind of rerolled dumplings for 2.0? Um, I didn't have to write much. Yeah, it should be trivial um, to fingerprint. And then, so, so, yeah, and then sometimes it's unclear, like if I've actually hit one, but I don't see anything over, like, uh, let's see here, one sec. I think the largest I saw was something like 153, if I remember, yeah. inputs. Um, yeah, I see a lot of large stuff recently, but I can't, are, are these coin join? Dude, I swear to God, is there, is there another person running a testnet coordinator? Uh, I believe yes, but I'm not 100% certain. Yeah, because there are some coin joins that don't exactly look like Wasabi. Like, yeah, but by anyone... the way, then you don't... Oh, well, no, actually, you would. But you would need to change the client mainly for that, right? But run a different coordinator so that only your uh, configured client is there. Yeah. Let me send this transaction. What do you guys think of this? Who does this belong to? Can you share the screen? Looks suspiciously similar. Let me share my screen. Window transactions. Looks a little suspicious, huh? Looks a little bit. Uh, looks like something, something naughty is happening here. But is that even an amount? That is right. Eight three eight six zero eight. I know these are amounts, and then three. I know this is an amount for yeah, sure. Yeah, that looks like two point zero. So this one here has um, hundred ninety two inputs, hundred ninety seven outputs. That's the biggest one I have. 192 inputs and outputs. That's pretty cool. Yeah, 190 on both sides. Yeah, almost 200. That's pretty nice. And it was a pretty big consolidation transaction as well. Uh, and when did it happen? Oh, no, I was wrong. It's not a consolidation transaction at all. It happened really recently. Uh, 0527, three days ago. Well, that's weird because, like, yeah, there was probably just Adam and Max testing testing that everyone else was in. Doing other things. Yep, sounds about right. What about this one? It matches. This one looks like it, right? This one has 188 and 206. Nice. Which is pretty good. The, the 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 goal is we I, I wanted to see like uh, coin joins where you know I knew that there could have been thirty people in it because that's what we're gonna expect right when we launch this we expect that at any moment it is reasonable to assume that thirty people are gonna be mixing and when you have a hundred inputs hundred outputs it's unlikely you're gonna have thirty people I can tell that so many denominations are skipped. Is, is, is this, do you think this was before the, the whole frequency table was, was dropped? 0527? Wait, is the frequency table dropped? Is it? I don't think so. Okay, because that's that was a real shame. Recent. That's a real shame. I, I, I think the frequency table is a real bad idea. Yeah, I tend to agree. Um, but again, like <sighs> having. Equal amounts seems like a more uh, conservative approach. But again, only if you do not consider the knapsack multiplier. So, yeah, I get your point. I'm almost convinced that it would be better to remove it. One cool thing that if we remove it, it would be easier to select inputs um, that That's are right. close to the value that you want, right? Oh, because it's not just a little know. bit easier. It's a, a hell of a lot easier. I think there's only like 20 different denominations here. I think it's quite narrow in terms of how many denominations I see here. Yeah, that's frequency table. Aviv, do you think you could handle the code for removing the frequency table? I, I, I shouldn't be. Even if it was simple, it still wouldn't be right for me to do that. I, I, I would 100% be down to go with, with Adam and do some paired programming. And I'd, I'd even be happy to do it, but I, I would need supervision. Yeah, I think if you can uh, do a couple pair programming sessions with Adam and get some concrete improvements in code, like improvements that you're convinced on a theoretical level, but where Adam has, is uncertain let's, about let's how schedule it. the code's going to be. So let's schedule it. Let's, uh, we already have a few. We have uh, some for uh, output selection. We have, um, yeah, we have a few things anyway. So let's, let's, let's do it. I can, I can book some time with Adam. Yeah, please do.
Adam is probably the best to do the pair programming with. Uh, he's quite deep into that code, uh, but he's very tired of it. <laughs> Let me just find his Calendly again. Oh, yes. Uh, we actually never uh, finished up my previous question of what were the changes that you did in the last pair programming session? It was just... Um... No, I mean, we just told it previously. So when you have more than 21 private UTXOs, you consolidate them to less than 21. But that's just changing the UTXO count target. Then was that the only change you did? Just changing that uh, one configuration value? I think so. Mm, I see. Okay, I booked some time for him tomorrow, pretty early in the morning for me. Cool. Uh, let me know the time. I'll try to join. Okay. We talked about the output selection strategy with different phases. We talked about likelihood to coin join. Is there any, anything else? Nope, that's that's the most uh, important stuff for now. Anything yeah. else? Nope, I'm going to go get some breakfast and a coffee. Well deserved. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Great. Then I'll stop the recording. Thanks, everyone, for joining this week's Wasabi Research Club. I'll see you on the next one.